I simulated some data for the example I've used in the last video. We are interested in the time before the Great Depression in Berlin and we want to know what portion of income was saved by customers at a local bank. So what we do is we get the bank's records and look up the income of the customers and see what portion of the income was being put on a savings account or the like. In this simple demonstration we are using percentage of income saved as our dependent variable and disposable income as our independent variable. So the first thing we got to do is read in our data, view it and attach it. And by now you should be familiar with the procedure so I already did that. Okay, first of all let's have a look at our data. So we put in a simple plot command, so plot and our explanatory variable is income and our dependent variable is saving. All right. Now this looks like heteroscedasticity if you ask me. You can see how the variance increases over time. But before we formally test this, we got to construct our model. So model 1 Simon operator lm for linear model open parentheses and we put in saving because this is our dependent variable is a function of income. And let's take a look at the summary of model one. All right, there we go. Yes, well, it seems like a good model, but again, let's visually check it for heteroscedasticity. So we put in plot, open parentheses, model one. Take a look at the first uh, plot over there, the first diagnostic plot. And um, Remember, this plot puts the regression line into the horizontal. So this plot puts the regression line right over here into the horizontal. So we should be able to capture most of the errors in some sort of rectangle. So imagine I would put in a rectangle over here and it should be able to capture most of the errors. And you, as you can see, this is not possible uh, right here. Um, we therefore have evidence for the presence of, ho of heteroscedasticity. So you can see how the variance increases over time. It gets larger and larger as more as we move to the um, to the right. So um, we have definitely evidence for the presence of heteroscedasticity. But again, let's formally check it. So the Breusch Pagan test is located in the awesome LM test package. So we have to load it. So library because I've already installed it. So oh, sorry, I gotta get away with the plots over here. So if you haven't installed the LM uh, test package yet, you got to install it first. But if you have, you put in library, open the parentheses, LM test, and now it loads the package. And let's use it. You, for the Breusch Pagan test, you put in B, uh, BP test, open the parentheses, and put in the name of your model. So model one, there you go. As you can see, it gives it gives you a p-value, so you can decide whether there is heteroscedasticity or not. Well, the p-value of um, 0.02 is below our significance threshold of 0.05, and we therefore reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and accept the alternative hypothesis of heteroscedasticity. Now, for the white test, it is a bit more complicated to implement. It needs more knowledge on other topics. We therefore postpone it to an eventually later video. But I would argue that nonlinear heteroscedasticity is easier to visually detect than linear heteroscedasticity. 